Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to The Daily Profile. I'm Corbs, and this is an after trading stream. It happens every single day-ish, Monday through Thursday, where we jump into the charts and we take a look at what exactly had happened in the markets. Hope you guys are having a uh, good Thursday. Happy Thursday to everybody. As you guys know, this will be our last stream of the week, so it'll be time to save the tears and goodbyes for today. Do not uh, die with the music still in your heart, as they say, a.k.a. Don't go out of this stream without jumping into the chats and saying what's up. Uh, also, if you guys are unaware for any reason, just by way of, let's say, general housekeeping, uh, Monday is a U.S. holiday, one of those Monday holidays that they just love to have scattered all throughout uh, so we can have excuses to have an additional day off, I guess. So that's going to be happening Monday. And if you are, for any reason, unaware, Friday is uh, going to be a normal day. And then Monday, the market will open at the regular time and it will close at 12 p.m. Uh, central time. As far as I wear, when I say the market, I'm talking specifically about the S&P 500. Um, so you can take that with a grain of salt, depending on what you, your situation is, but you can always look up the uh, trading CME product. You can look up the CME holiday schedule and see what's going on Monday for you. With that being said, Monday, I will be off the charts completely whenever there is a, a, a holiday type of schedule. The only people who are typically on the screens are going to be the needy or the greedy. Uh, I don't find myself in either one of those camps at the moment, so planning on staying off the screens on Monday, but it's a little while until Monday, so depending how this weekend goes, I just might be there not planning on it. Friday, I'll expect that the action gets a little wonky, uh, I imagine most people are going to be in a position <clears throat> to be taking a nice long weekend. So I imagine we're going to see some weird stuff going on tomorrow, but we'll have to put a, put, a, put a pin in that and see what's going on. Okay, kind of a long introduction. If you guys are all still with me and haven't dropped off yet while I was just rambling on, uh, I'm happy that you're here. I'm going to be happy to close out this streaming week with you. We got a four-day streaming week. Very uh, progressive of us here. We don't want to overwork ourselves. Got uh, quite a bit to talk about today. We got a little bit of time to do it, as always. Want to make sure we got some good time to hang out into the old chat box. So we're going to give some time to that. Uh, I'm going to start off the stream by asking a simple question. Have you ever been trading and feel the uh, emotions boil up inside with you? Have you ever been trading and then gotten on tilt? Has the market ever been moving and you just find yourself triggered? Uh, if you find yourself answering no to those questions, I'm going to instruct you to try and check the pulse. i got some bad news for you. You're probably dead. We're going to talk a little bit about trading through or at least dealing with getting triggered by the market. It was a focal part of my trading today. And that's the, the thing we do here on these streams. Since we have these every day-ish, we just talk about what's going on in real time. Uh, a suspect long intro for this stream. So uh, let me jump into the chats and we're gonna do a roll call of sorts. I'm gonna see who's in the building and then we're gonna jump into things. If you are for any reason stopping by for the very first time or watching this on a replay, by all means, a big welcome to you. I hope you plan on sticking around. Let me see who we have in the building and then we are going to just jump right into things. Uh, because like I said, we got a lot, of, a, lot, a lot to talk about today. We got a little bit of time to do. Orlando front and center, nice to see you. Muggies. Uh, nice to see you as well. You guys were here nice and early. Uh, Orlando, 10 minutes early. You're on time. Uh, oh, that's late. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Javor, nice to see you. Warren, odd American. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Yeah, let's go. Lucas in the building. Daniel in the building. Greg, nice to see all of you guys. Veronica, hello, hello. Lori Fox, nice to see you. Nice to see you. I hear a little bit of an echo. I'm hearing an echo. Well, fun fact for everybody, I spent quite a bit of time switching around quite a bit of my settings for the stream, and uh, it's very unfortunate to hear that there is an echo because I took some creative liberties in uh, uh, adjusting some of the settings in my audio, and right off the bat, hearing that I did a pretty bad job at it, uh, I don't think I'd be entirely surprised at that. Let me go ahead and do this and see if that fixes the echo at all. <coughs> Excuse me. You guys can let me know. Basically, turning off all the fancy things that I just did today, and uh, maybe I'll just stay inside my lane, um, and 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 uh, you know, not try to get too creative with the audio. But you guys, let me know if that fixed anything, uh, and then if not, 
It will uh, see a lot of nopes. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Um, let me see, like while we're talking through this, I'm just gonna do one quick other thing and we're not even gonna really let this interfere at all with the uh, stream because we're basically just, you know, you know, going right along and uh, how about that? That fixed it. Am I, I don't even need to ask, I know it did. And I'm also gonna go back and turn on my other fancy stuff. And uh, you guys are gonna just be hearing the silky sound of my voice. And if you guys say that doesn't fix it, uh, then I'm just gonna be sad because I got no other buttons I can push at this point in my streaming career. Okay, let me see what else is going on with you guys and who else is in the building, but yeah, let me know if that echo is uh, fixed at all. Let's see here, I think we were at uh, Lori being the first one to raise the, the, the red flag of sorts. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see here, Bradley. Thank God I was on sim today. Mentally uh, 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 tried to force a reversal. Oof. Good job you stayed on sim today. Today was not the day to do that all. We can talk about that in just a moment. Let's see, Orlando, if you don't feel those feelings or those emotions, you're 100% a robot or a drone. It's impossible to trade without feelings, those emotions. Sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes, all the time. Going places, John, nice to see all of you guys in the building. Uh, thanks for all the comments here about the sound being way worse and terrible. Perfect now, much better, fixed it. Mm, 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 mm. Don't lose faith in ya boy when it comes to the audio. Uh, kind of the bane of my experience. I can't tell you how many times I've been involved with a recording or a piece of content and uh, the, the audio has just gone down the old crapper. The dream is just to get big enough on this platform to where we can have a full-time producer and I just have to show up and do this, you know what I'm saying? Okay, with that being said, feel free to keep jumping into the chat because I'm gonna be referencing it all throughout. To the nine of you who've hit the like button before I asked or we really got started, Mwah! I love you all equally. To the rest of you in the room who did not, I got my eyes on you, what gives? Okay, let's jump into some chats and jump into some charts and take a look at what exactly is going on here. The S&P today is what we're looking at. Wouldn't be much of a shocker. We're sitting on about 86 points worth of range, virtually straight up. And let me just explain to you what we got going on here. This move really started yesterday. We had a fairly positive reaction off of the FOMC minutes. Uh, we stopped just shy of a lot of liquidity that was resting right at the 4,000 even. We stopped just shy of this in the previous session. And instead of reaching into those levels, we just dipped, I'm sure, a lot of smaller people and shorter time frames got a little on the worked overside with this drop, uh, but nothing had changed, nothing was different. This was just a little sink down before this all just decided to run right back up. Um, we, 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 right from the beginning of this day, right from the open, we just took off and there was turning down for what action all day long. This was Extremely difficult, I imagine, to catch the first part of this move up. Um, and then from there, there was no pullbacks. There really wasn't anything to get on board with. I imagine that this was very difficult to trade. I say I imagine, I found it extremely difficult. And um, I imagine most people did as well. But if for any reason you were able to just ride this bad lad all the way up, bravo Letta, because uh, I imagine this is, is not very easy. Typically when there's a trending type action, the first initial move is, is typically hard to get on board with because we don't have a lot of information yet to really understand what is quite happening with the push. Once it's clear that this is what's happening, we're typically pretty far away and, and it's not the best time to be jumping on board. Uh, a, a fairly common strategy would be, you know, missing out on the first leg of a, of a strong trending type day getting on board with some type of a pullback and then taking it through to some continuation really wasn't what we got today. Uh, we really just went straight to where we were going and then decided to chill out for just a little bit. Um, overall, putting in about 86 points worth of range. Something I would like to point out, where we stopped, uh, seemingly at a random place, just kind of in the mid 70s. From us in the profiling world, we know it's not random place. We have a very nice uh, micro composite that's been built out that we can focus on. We have our value area high. We have the point of control. We have our value area low. These are levels, value area low, being extremely well defended and respected. We returned to this point of control and then we moved coast to coast visiting the other side of value. 
Uh, when you have a profile, it just makes so much sense out of the action and what's likely to happen next. Now, it doesn't mean you can always take advantage of it in a thing like today, moving to the point of control, uh, moving to the other side of value. These are not shocking things, but potentially the way that it shaped up was fairly shocking. Okay, uh, let's take a peek at what exactly happened here today for me. Ending out the session about $750 up. Um, very small involvement with this day. I took, I believe, two trades. I'm gonna drill this in. We're gonna walk through them. And then I'm gonna have some thoughts for your thoughts about what exactly led to this. Let me turn these on and see where they're at. Um, and then just kind of what exactly had happened for me today. Here's, of all the of all that we did today, this was my involvement, those two little, oops, those two little areas right in there. If we back this up all the way to the beginning of the day, uh, this is where it all started. We started off right at the open, just pushed, and then it the, just never, ever stopped. Never, ever, ever stopped. So here's what I did with this action. Uh, I involved myself as we were testing into this LVN with a small short position. Started off very small, gave this a little bit of wiggle room. As we came back down, I increased the size slightly and then took it off for not much of a gain. This was not a trade that I was meant to try and hold for a long period of time. This was meant to be a short, uh, a, a, a short trade that was to the downside, but also duration was meant to be short as well. And uh, all in all, it wasn't, I, I don't feel even good about the fact that I took this. It, it wor worked and I secured some profit on this trade, but um, it was a fairly risky trade with a fairly poor risk to reward on it. And overall, I could have done better with just avoiding that completely because I very easily could have got chopped out of this trade or on the wrong side of this. Uh, the, the little dip that we had didn't take that great of advantage of it. Overall, it just wasn't a great thing for me to be involved with. Um, and then a little bit later on, this was a uh, another LVN that we had stopped at nicely and another thing that we understand from the, the profile, uh, LVNs were coming in very focal today. We had an extremely unfinished top from just the daily profile that was shaping up. So I was looking at this to go more to the upside. I actually was supposed to be entering in down in here as we test into this LVN. I hesitated and missed the entry. Uh, and then we had a bit of momentum stepping in. We had a very likely target of new high of day. So I went ahead and jumped on board with it, rode it to new high of day, uh, where I took off basically the whole position by my last contract. And then I put my last contract just one tick above break even. Basically, it was just going to sit on this for as high as it went. And if it kicked back on me, I was just going to lock in what I had. Uh, it dipped in just to lock me in and then took off. And then uh, I did nothing else with it. Okay, so that was my involvement with this day. Very little taken out of this, very little action for me. And it really all starts back with how today shaped up. Uh, coming into this day, my primary idea was more to the upside, kind of that general idea that we talked about when we were looking at this from a slightly higher time frame here. The idea that this had dipped down just to settle out the day, but this was going higher. That was my primary idea. If we could get outside of previous range, had a big time target for the overnight high, which was putting us uh, right at the 40.10. And then just above this is that micro composite point of control. This was the likely spot for it to go. This was the trade idea that I was banking on getting long, taking it into this area right here. Um, beyond that, there was obviously more range extension we could have had, but everything else became much less likely compared to how likely of a target this was for me. And what ended up happening is in the first uh, less than 10 minutes, in kind of the first like seven minutes of the day, uh, we had pushed into all of that. So as the, the market opened up, as I'm just trying to understand how these first couple rotations are coming in and what exactly is going on, um, we just go straight up 30 plus points, hit targets, everything at that point as far as my trade idea is just done. Now. Here's a very pivotal point in my day. We talk about, and you guys have seen me have very frustrating days. You've seen me have very bad days. And sometimes I don't talk specifically about the thing that triggered it. Um, but I've talked about this one specific trigger quite a bit because it's one of the ones that gets me the most. And it's having either some type of a trade idea that I don't get on board with or that I get on board with and I get chopped out of 
uh, something along that line to where I'm just not involved or I take a loss. And then I have to sit there and just watch the trade play out. Um, it is a thing that is frustrating for everybody. And of all the emotions that we feel one way or the other, we all feel them uh, to some level. But inside of those things that make us mad or make us happy, there are certain things that are going to really be our kryptonites. Um, and it's so important to understand which one of those things trigger you. Because when you understand them, you know you have to be pumping the brakes. I know this very well about myself because I've traded through this so many times where I have to sit through that exact situation in some variation. And then I just start feeling a certain sort of way. My, my focus starts getting very narrowed. And these are the times where I find myself uh, completely blocking out everything I should be blocking out, never stepping away from the screens for the entire day, putting on 30 trades, just trying to fight the market all day long. This is a tale as old as time for me. So we identify these things and we just stop them before they become a problem. Now, in the first, within the first seven minutes of the day, I had already missed out. This market had already gone so far. I already knew that I was already triggered. And the opportunity is just not going to be there for me. It's a very unfortunate thing, but the alternative of trying to force something or, or just not being humble enough to understand that I'm already out of this game. I'm already out of it. It just started and I'm already out. Um, that was what happened for me today. Ended up spending most of the day off the screens. We got a beautiful day outside. I enjoyed a lot of the weather. I took a couple very small interactions with this market. Both of them worked out. And so I actually have a pretty good PL day. All things considered, ending the day flat, I would have been just as happy. With, no, that's not true. Not would have been just as happy, but I would have been happy ending this day flat um, as opposed to feeling like I needed to force something. And this is just everything piled into this. This market wouldn't stop down. I'm already feeling triggered. I'm Then I'm starting to feel FOMO. I'm just starting to feel all sorts of frustrations. What's a boy to do? Okay. There might be a higher level of awareness option that is out there. But in real time, what I have to deal with, I got to use the Nike defense, put on my shoes, run away, and just spend some time off the screens. The point of this and where all of this is just saying is it's so valuable. Like it's such a powerful thing to when you freak out in the markets, do not just, just walk away from that and do something to sedate yourself, either by drinking or sleeping or eating or watching TV or don't sedate yourself and, and put all your attention off of what happened and forget why it happened. If you can sit through that pain and just ha sit through it after it's over and just reflect on it and figure out why did this happen? And if you can start connecting the dots that, hey, every single time, I have a trade idea that works out that I didn't take or that I took, but I got shook out of and then it worked. Every time that situation happens, some point during that day, I freak out. Yeah. Then you can do something about it. It's a very powerful piece of information. I know when that happens, I sit in here, I get very frustrated. I start zoning in. I start just, you know, everything else gets, gets blocked. I'm just very narrow. I do something that I shouldn't do because I'm forcing something. Then I take some type of a loss, which just causes me to start flying off the handle. Um, I've seen the movie too many times. I stopped it before it started. That's the point of what it's saying. And still had, uh, you know, eventually at some point, there was still a couple things that somewhat surfaced and was able to take a little bit out of this market. Mm. Those are my thoughts for your thoughts. That's all the thoughts I have for your thoughts. Let me flip over to the chats and see what's going on with you guys. And uh, then we're going to be wrapping up for the day. So we are at the point in our stream where we've introed, we've done a roll call of sorts. We've, uh, we've gone through some analysis, walked through my trades. Um, I gave you some thoughts for your thoughts. Now it's just time to hang out. So whenever we're done hanging out, by done hanging out, there's going to be the uh, no more comments coming into the chat box. We're just going to wrap up. We're going to be done. 
Not for the day. We're going to be done for the week. Let that sink in, people. Done for the week. Don't miss your time to just say what's up. Um, we also will not be back on Monday. It saddens me to tell you this. I would never leave you when you need me most. But don't even trade on Monday more than likely. So, you know, who needs me then? Um, yeah, so Monday we won't be back. So we won't be back until Tuesday. So we do need to get all the tears and the goodbyes out uh, for today. All right, let me jump through these. And then, um, yeah, let me see what's going on with you guys a little bit. Let's see here. Orlando, let's hit these charts, baby. You already know. Brian Shabilia. Thanks, Corp. Your trade's looking as strong as you are. Brian, I uh, know you're being humorous, but I actually have been uh, really taking an interest in my health recently, and uh, I, I hope that it's showing. So I actually needed to hear that. I appreciate it. Thanks for being one of the real ones. Warren, I usually don't do well on trend days. I do well buying a pullback in the composite value area. Uh, thanks to you and your course. Oh, very good. Love to hear it. Uh, very important to understand what environment you work better in as well. Yes, for sure. I got triggered the same way, missing a trade that planned pre-market. Yes, yes, yes. And and it's it's inside of the things that really trigger us. It's always something negative. It's not like anybody likes the situation. But what's more than just this thing makes me angry or this thing makes me frustrated. It's this thing triggers me and there's no coming back from it. Um, those things, I think we all have. I have them. I'm assuming everybody else has them. So other things that will be bad that will happen, they affect me. They make me mad. But there's some things where there's no coming back. Knowing those things is extremely, extremely important. Richard, love your insights. They really resonate with me. Fears and worries that go through my mind. Knowing that these things are normal really helps. Uh, keep up the great commentary. I will keep it up, Richard. Uh, thanks for the comment. Lucas, Gorbs. Based on what you just said, how was your journey in your early days regarding discipline, mainly how you changed your mindset to only trade your edge uh, once you found it? Lucas, it's a great question. The, I'll tell you this. It is, for a, for a long time in the beginning, I had no clue what an edge was. I had no clue that I wasn't trading with it. <coughs> I was very confused. Um, just being instructed and just getting clear about taking actions that that do have an edge, that there is something likely to happen over something else um, is a very powerful thing. And, and understanding what pieces make that up is extremely, extremely important. So a lot of it, a, a lot of, and I, I know a lot of people get stuck here too, is it's not even necessarily a discipline thing, but it's just that you don't understand. I didn't understand that I didn't know what I needed to be focused on. I didn't know what I needed to stick to because um, I didn't have anything worth sticking to. And once you get clear about that, and once you fully, you know, really understand it, if you're struggling with just trading inside of that, uh, you probably have like a, a lack of skill with your edge, or you have a lack of trust in your edge. Um, a lot of these things will come with time and will come with just, you know, proving them to yourself, proving them it's a sense of like confidence in yourself and confidence in what you're doing that you can't just hear that somebody else, even if somebody you trust gave it to you, you can't just lean on that. You have to lean on your actual experience of executing it over and over and over again. Um, it's something that builds with time. And that's why when you deviate away or when you do something, you know, when we do something we shouldn't do and we take big hits or we take losses, it's not just the money. A lot of times it resets that confidence we've been building up. And it's a very destructive thing that the, the, the you know, half-life on that decision goes for a very, very long time. Imram, rings true with me. Revenge trading. Learn to walk away for the most parts. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing that we don't ever master. We don't ever, it never goes away. We can master it, I'm sure. But it's not one of those things like, to your point, we don't just... It doesn't get fixed. It's just something that we have to always be on. And this is one reason why the, the live in the lifestyle and the things that we do off the screens are so important. Because if you are coming in here and you're underslept, you're, you're hyped up on eating sugars for days and, and you, know, you have no type of mental clarity or sharpness and you think that you're gonna be able to stop yourself even if you know kind of what's wrong, you're never going to be able to stop yourself. 
and living the life and, and every single day being sharp so that when those things happen, I had no idea this was going to happen today. And I can guarantee you, if today I came in and I wasn't, you know, I didn't have an 80 sleep score and I, I was, I haven't been on it. Um, today might have been the day that I let those things slip and just gave in, you know? It's a real battle that we got to be up for fighting every day. And if we're not up for fighting it, maybe we get lucky and the market gives us something fine and we don't get triggered. But those days, it really shows us, you know, shines a light on whether or not we're really living the life or not. Uh, you know, it's just true. And you guys have seen me fall in those areas. I don't, I don't say that as somebody who's perfect in this stuff, you know, but uh, not as good as I'll be tomorrow, but better than I was yesterday, you know, something like that. Come as you are, don't leave as you came. I don't know. Something like that fits maybe. Uh, Jordan, started off well, and then I gave it back in the chop. Do you have any rules for um, when you just walk away after being up, after one loss, two, a percentage, etc.? cetera? <coughs> uh, Jordan, really great question. Um, I don't have one as much right now. I, I have definitely implemented these in the past, and I think it's an incredibly good idea for if you are up, uh, maybe if part of your plan that you've laid out, you are up this amount, which is kind of like your target that you're trying to hit. Um, if you're up 50% of that, don't ever give back. Like if you want to keep trading, you now, your whole risk parameters revolve around half of that. And simple math, you know, you're trying to make 500 bucks, you're up 500 bucks and you, you now can keep trading, but if you lose 250, you're just done. So no matter what happens, you're walking away, locking in $250 today. Um, that's a great thing. And I think it goes so far beyond, like there's so many other benefits than just locking in some money today. But the mental side of being up and then losing it all, if you are not extremely confident in yourself and if you are not, if you are not secure in your skills of what you're doing here, those kind of fluctuations can be extremely taxing. You get to a point where it's not, where you can be up a lot, you can have something to where a series of decisions takes it all away, um, and as long as you weren't flying off or doing something bad, like it's not brutal, but you you do go through times, especially early on, where these, these things can be brutal. And if you make a decision that just sets you back uh, in your mind, it's horrible. The other thing is growing your account and protecting your capital is the most important thing. Mm. And so that's something we don't really outgrow. So making a decision to where you error, let's say it, it's an error on the side of locking something in, to me, it's a good thing to do. Um, so I really like that idea of if you're up a certain amount, it has to be a certain amount. Like you don't want to just, I'm up for the day. So, you know, my first trade locked in two points, did you, nothing like that. Um, but if you're up to where, like you say, this is my profit target for the day. Yeah. Keep 50% of that. No matter what it's a great idea. Great, 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 great idea. All right. What else we got guys? Um, 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 uh, Warren, sorry. That was the 0375 area went along today. No worries, man. We got you. Thanks for the clarification. Kenrick trend days are so tough. I always might find myself thinking that the move is already made and it keeps pushing further, making even more difficult to join the trend thinking it's too overextended. I am right there with you, but I'll tell you what, so another good line of thought to just stop yourself from ever thinking. And if you, it, it, you don't stop yourself, but if you feel these thoughts going on in your mind, if you got your brain space full of these kind of things, walk away from the screen because I promise you nothing good will ever, ever, ever happen. If you have these thoughts in your head, it's gone too far. It needs to come back. It doesn't. It doesn't need to come back. It doesn't need to do anything. However far it's gone, it could double that. It could triple that. It doesn't have to do anything. The old saying, the market can be irrational longer than you can be solvent is so true. Tried and true, an oldie but goodie. Uh, and so if you ever find yourself thinking those kind of thoughts, like this needs to pull back or this has gone too far, just stop yourself because you are lost to the world. And I'll tell you, I had these thoughts in my mind today. You don't outgrow these things. But when they slip in there, because I'll tell you, we went too far. From my perspective, we should have pulled back, but these are not trade ideas. These are not helpful thoughts. These do not translate into edge or making money. So the idea, the powerful thing here, you, you catch yourself thinking those thoughts, mm, just stop, walk away. You're done. Like it's you, whatever happens next is not going to be good. Alberto, any advice on the best way to ride the trend? 
I find it so difficult. There was a very interesting topic you talked about with Patrick. Uh, yeah, I agree with that as well. Thank you. That episode did not perform as well as I thought. Thanks for being one of the other people who watched it. Um, yeah, in terms of, yeah, in terms of writing the trend, there's a few things about this. In a situation like today, where we just blast off and there's just no coming back, um, this is a very difficult thing to be on. This is a very difficult thing to be on board with. To be able to catch the first leg of this move um, is very hard. <coughs> and typically what will happen with me when we're doing a trend type day, this is what I'm looking for. One, if there's some way that early on, maybe we just don't go straight into it, but we go, there's some kind of like an early couple pullbacks before we keep going. Happy days, looking to lock some of those things in or looking to jump on. But if we do something like this where it just goes and it never stops, it didn't stop until we went up like 50 points. At that point, I have a very hard time wanting to be aggressive about keeping pushing it because we've already covered so much distance. The average range for a day right now is around 80 points. We already crushed up 50 of those points. Mm. How much more opportunity is there in this? Okay, maybe 30 points. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the point being here though, this is a, I would say, a very tough trend day to get on board with. And this is why I didn't do much with it. Typically, have the first move. If I miss that, some type of a pullback to get on board with. There was no pullback today. If the market is trending, but we're grinding and this isn't just turning down for what, I'll be more aggressive. And this is the thing I think I just went, I was leading into trying to say here. When the market is, is pushing up and you can tell that this is getting directional, how do you tell it's getting directional? A huge insight into this is pushing away from previous ranges, breaking out of value, uh, 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 starting a fresh change of context. When these type of things happen, you can put together this is getting directional today. You have the freedom to be more aggressive about jumping on board, not being more aggressive, like taking on more risk, but the idea of waiting for the ideal pullback is not something that is as likely to happen. So you, you, you can be much more uh, proactive about joining it. The complete opposite is true if we are not getting directional. Those are the times you need to be very patient. You need to wait for those ideal pullbacks and those prices that you like. Um, but when we're getting directional, anything that is a, a level that I can lean against, I would be happy just joining on with the exception of something like today where all my primary targets were hit within the first 10 minutes of this day. You know, it was like, where do we go from here? I'll wait for a pullback. We never got the pullback. There wasn't much to do with that. Um, Alberto, it'd be a nice topic to talk about in detail on a coaching call. So you can feel free to bring that up sometime if you want to go in a little more detail. Brian Sibilia, got to jump on a work call. Thanks, Corbs. Much love. Thanks for being one of the brilliant. Brian, if you're still here, if you are still here. Andre, self-discipline outside of trading is a huge impact on your trading. Self-understanding is important. Jim Dalton, self-understanding is important. Jim Dalton. Um, yep. Jordan, thanks. Andrea, never fade the trend. I know it's hard. Yes, yes, yes. Mateus, that's true. When the market decides to liquidate people, don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. You're very welcome, Alberto. Okay. Guys, that's the last thing that I'm seeing come into the chat box. If you're in the middle of typing right now, we've been going for a long time. Some would say... I mean, this is a healthy, this is a healthy stream. So we're going to go ahead and end it out right here uh, with that last word from Alberto being thanks, Corbs. Uh, to everybody who has joined me once again, thanks for another great week. Thanks for being here. It's always uh, an enjoyment to me. I love wrapping up my trading day right here with all of you. I hope you guys continue to enjoy it as well. I hope we end up doing this stream for another 30 to 50 years minimum. And uh, I appreciate all of the support. Let's hit the like button on the way out. We will be back not on Monday as normal. We will be back on Tuesday. Don't forget about the Monday holiday. We made the announcement early on. If you can go back and watch the beginning of the stream. Have a great weekend. Have a long weekend. If you need to take some time off, I hope that you get that in. If you need to step up and put your nose to the grind and get some work done. I hope you get that done as well. Uh, have a great weekend. I'll see you guys bright and early on Tuesday. As soon as the market gets done and I stop trading for the day. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.